This is Courtney at ISPE. Welcome to this month's First Friday webinar. Uh, just a couple of reminders before we get started. Um, you all received a, an email this morning about 10.30 uh, that had a link to the quiz and the handouts. Um, so please take the time to complete that quiz by Sunday evening um, so that I can get them graded and PDH certificates out to you uh, within the next couple of weeks. Our presenter today is actually me. Um, I will be presenting on social media for engineers. Um, I graduated uh, with an undergraduate degree in journalism from Marquette University uh, in Milwaukee, and I've been working on social media projects for probably the last 10 years. So hopefully I have some things that are valuable to share with you. Um, I'd encourage any of you, if you have questions throughout the webinar, to please submit those and we'll answer them as we go along. So we all know about personal social media. Uh, chances are most of you have a Facebook page, a Twitter handle, a profile on LinkedIn, or barring that, um, you've hopefully at least watched a State House Rock video from ISPE on YouTube. Um, but how can you go from looking at photos of your friends' vacations to sharing professional content with your colleagues or representing, representing your business? Um, we're going to take a look at that today. There was a study done in 2015 by Engineering.com and True Marketing that had 580 respondents uh, from Engineering.com's database that represented um, industries, job roles, and ages and company sizes within the world of engineering. Um, that survey was open for a couple of weeks during the summer of 2015, um, so it is relatively current um, and I think applicable to um, us as we kick off 2017. Um, and the survey really focused on how to market to engineers. So while the purpose of the survey may have been for um, marketers to market to you as an engineer, I think there are some things to learn from the survey um, that are valuable um, as you look at building your own social network. Um, the, it really is key in looking at how you can best collaborate with your colleagues, um, promote your work within the industry, recruit and hire new talent, which I know a lot of people are interested in, and interact with related industry professionals who you might not get FaceTime with. There are a couple of key findings in this survey. Um, it found that most engineers, when reading newsletters, um, particularly e-newsletters, they scan the subject lines before they open it up, whether or not they're going to even take the time to read it. Um, while this is maybe disheartening to those of us who write the newsletters you read, uh, it's really an interesting point to remember when sharing things with your colleagues. Um, if you're sharing an article that you found interesting that you took the time to read, and you're sharing that via an email or maybe through LinkedIn, the few minutes that you take to write a descriptive sentence or um, a headline, if you will, um, may in help encourage them to read the article in question based on the emails and the phone calls that ISPE gets every day, it really seems that engineers are constantly looking for new information on how to accomplish their jobs more effectively, how to navigate professional licensure, and how to best communicate the importance of the work that engineers do. By sharing relevant information with your growing network, you can also accomplish these goals. Not uncommonly, most work-related content for engineers is consumed on a desktop computer, if you're in the office particularly. Um, if you're out in the field or during your commute, you might be looking in and checking in on a mobile device. Regardless of how that content is consumed, it's really important to note that most respondents to this survey found that websites and search engines were a more valuable resource to them than offline re uh, resources like magazines. Um, this might be because it's easier to Google something you're looking for than to go through back issues of a magazine that might be sitting on your bookshelf. Um, there also seems to be a trend toward more online educational opportunities versus in-person conferences and seminars. Um, ISPE really does seem to have gotten a little ahead of the curve with our First Friday series, but companies bring in vendors and provide educational content to their employees, 
and it serves to understand what your employees or your fellow engineers are really looking for. Online content also allows you, as an engineer, to give an overview of a regional project to engineers across the country, uh, something that in-person events are sometimes unable to accomplish. Uh, it was also interesting to note that this study found that the level of trust engineers have in content written by an engineering expert at a vendor or a company is much higher than that of an industry analyst or an editorial pieces about the field. And we'll get into that in a little bit. So who responded to this survey? 11% um, of respondents were under the age of 25, 20% were 26 to 35, 19% in that 36 to 45 range, 24% 46 to 55, 20% 56 to 65, and 6% over the age of 66. So it's a fairly even distribution of respondents within the age groups that are starting out in the industry and are looking towards retirement, um, and everybody there in the middle as well. And the survey also looked at the primary job function of the respondents. So a wide variety of respondents within the industry participated in the study. 27.3% identified as being in the engineering design field, with 13.7% in the engineering consulting area. Others identified in various other related fields like management, engineering project management, other engineering, and architecture building contractor. Uh, some interviewed were also students, which is an interesting metric when you're looking at the future of engineering and the use of social media in the industry. So who's using social media and how are they using it? The study looked at um, social media by age group and use by age group. And when it's examined in this way, responses show younger age groups use social media in their personal lives um, and older engineers are more likely to use social media for work and professional networking. Um, but we can break that down a little bit further. Regardless of age, most engineers have indicated in this study that they use social media in their personal life, but nearly 31% said that they use it for work as well. It's interesting to note 8.6% have a, quote, separate social media presence for work. It's unclear by this data whether this means that they only have a LinkedIn page, which is a professional network, um, or if they've built out a unique Facebook or Twitter account that's specific to their career. So they're keeping their work life online and their social life online as two separate accounts. This is something that you might want to consider if you're considering building your online presence. Um, if you don't necessarily want your colleagues to see your vacation photos, um, it might be worth con considering building out a Facebook page that is focused more on your professional accomplishments. The study also looked at um, younger engineers and their use of social media more exclusively in their personal life. Over half of all engineers age 35 and younger reported using social media in their personal lives and sometimes reading articles that apply to work. This might be a carryover from high school and college where friends and classmates um, were the primary target of why they were involved in social media. Um, they were really looking to build their personal social network and not necessarily their professional social network. It'll be interesting to see if these data points change as young people become more invested in the longevity of their careers um, and as they become more entrenched in uh, their work life as opposed to their a little bit more relaxed social life as they were coming out of college. There were um, demographics that said that they didn't use social media for work. Um, older engineers use less social media in both spheres of work and personal life. There are more engineers over the age of 55 who don't use social media as compared to engineers age 35 and younger. Again, this is likely due to the adoption of social media platforms while 
engineers were in school. Um, as the age demographics of the industry change, it will be interesting to see how these numbers change. It's also worth noting that both older and younger engineers will need to adjust how they use social media for it to be a useful tool to connect, um, especially if younger engineers are using it more socially and older engineers are maybe a little bit more likely to use it for work purposes, figuring out a, a middle line between those two. And that may come as um, the industry continues to grow and age and change. That shift really does need to begin now, though, for it to be effective. Social media use specifically for work purposes is fairly even across age groups. Engineers under the age of 55 report about 35% usage, and a similar number of engineers over the age of 55 also report using social media for work, about 28%. That's not as big of a contrast as was expected by those running the study. Um, and when it comes to work, social media is used fairly evenly across age groups. The, the use of social media and what's being shared is something that really needs to be looked at. So what are some of the social media uses at work? There are a lot of uses, um, whether you're thinking about your personal network or how your company uses social media. Um, and we're going to go through some of these. Vetting job candidates um, is one way that social media is used and has been identified as being used in the media. Um, and there was a 2016 survey done by Career Builder. Um, it was a Harris poll con conducted online with a sampling margin of about two, uh, plus or minus two. And it really said that 60% of employers are using social networking to research job candidates, which was up from 11% in 2006, the first year the study was done. Um, that's a huge leap in a span of 10 years. 59% of hiring managers use search engines to research candidates. And while these, the media play that you might be seeing is that people are looking for reasons to not hire someone, um, it's Online searches and social media are also being used as a recruitment tool to bring new life into different um, organizations. So because of this, most hiring managers aren't looking uh, for negatives intentionally. Six in ten employers who currently use social networking sites to research job candidates are looking for information that supports their qualifications for the job, according to the survey. For some occupations, this could include a professional portfolio, which would be applicable to the field of engineering. 53% of the hiring managers want to see if a candidate has a professional online persona. 30% want to see what other people are posting about the candidate. And 21% admit they're looking for reasons not to hire the candidate. So there's a lot of buzz about the various social media blunders can cost you uh, and the way that they can cost you a job, but it doesn't mean you should keep your, your profile completely private. Um, more than two in five employers, about 41%, say that they are likely to interview job candidates if they are un or they are less likely, excuse me, to interview job candidates if they are unable to find information on that person online which is a 6% increase since the last year. It's not just potential employees who should keep their digital tracks clean either. 41% of employers say that they use social networking sites to research current employees. Nearly a third, about 32%, use search engines to check up on current employees. And more than one in four, 26%, have found content online that has caused them to reprimand or fire an employee. Right or wrong, social media is entrenched in our personal lives and our work lives, and finding an even balance is important. Further, a separate study found that some savvy job seekers are using social media to their benefit. Nearly a fifth of workers, about 18%, check out hiring managers on their social media when they are job hunting. All of this is to say that while you have to be cautious of what you share online, for many of us, not having an online presence is not really an option. 
whether you're in charge of hiring, looking to get hired, simply networking with colleagues, or if you're a business and you're looking to promote your business online. Sharing industry information and networking really go hand in hand. Um, sharing information can be done in a number of ways, but social media is a major player. There are more social networking platforms that you can shake a stick at anymore, but the study also looked at the most popular social media platforms for engineers. LinkedIn is by far the most popular social platform for engineers. 63% of engineers maintain an account on LinkedIn. LinkedIn will allow you to connect with your colleagues and other professionals in your industry. It's an excellent platform if you want to move up the professional ladder. It's almost like an online resume. By creating connections with influential people and potential employers, new opportunities are more likely to arise. Additionally, you'll be able to see the resources that your colleagues are sharing. There are a couple of different platforms on LinkedIn, um, and one is groups, or one uh, groups are a, a big thing on LinkedIn. LinkedIn users can join groups that are dedicated to a specialized interest, like engineering. Within the groups, users can post questions and share advice. In short, it's an excellent and efficient pro platform that helps you as an engineer stay in touch with pro the professional world. Groups are wide-reaching communities within the industry, and you can set up your accounts to send you a digest of the conversations happening within these groups on a daily or weekly ba basis. And so you as Joe Schmo engineer, um, whether you're a PE or an SE, you can go in and find groups that are relevant to your interests as an engineer. Or say you're uh, an electrical engineer, but you're interested in the civil world. You would be able to go in and um, find groups that would fit both of those demographics. Companies are um, also on LinkedIn as a separate thing. Um, you can follow or like companies in your industry. Updates that are shared by these companies are published to your newsfeed if you follow them on, um, on LinkedIn. Um, on the screen, you can see a, a screenshot of the ISPE LinkedIn page, uh, the company page. And so when ISPE posts something um, that we think is maybe relevant to the practice of engineering, um, you can like that, share that. Um, and you can interact with those posts, um, and your network will also be able to see that you're engaging with that post. This is a way for you to engage not only with your company, the company that you work for, um, or for your company to engage with individuals, but also an easy way to keep up with vendors, associations like ISPE, and other companies that are emerging as leaders in the field. And that might be through groups or through companies, um, but a combination of both is probably healthy. The next social platform is Twitter. Twitter is hugely popular and is used by 55% of engineers. The microblogging site is an easy and fast way to pick up the latest trends and headlines related to engineering um, or really any world news. You can follow the industry leaders and other engineering-related accounts to know the trending topics. But what's more is you can follow things other than just the accounts that interest you. Twitter offers a really easy way to get a snapshot of what's happening in the industry by searching through hashtags and trending topics. This is a great way to extend your knowledge base. Um, while you might be an, a civil engineer, checking trends that might help you find out about advances in other engineering specialties um, can all happen by checking these hashtags. And that could help serve as a point of professional interest or a way for you to connect with a colleague who has those interests um, or to expand just really just to expand your knowledge base. YouTube um, 
might come as a surprise as uh, its popularity with engineers, but it ranks third um, according to this, this poll. 48% of engineers use YouTube. Um, primarily, it's a video-based platform. Um, YouTube contains informative resources for engineers. For instance, um, if you are having trouble with a project, you can go over to YouTube and see if there are any videos that are related. Um, industry experts educate engineers by demonstrating how to set up particular equipment or troubleshooting a device. It's a social media site for engineers looking to learn new things quickly. Uh, it's also a great way to learn how to do non-engineering things like get an ink stain out of a shirt um, quickly. Video is a strategy that many people are using to engage with younger potential hires and clients. Um, it's a great way to share, for example, drone footage of a completed or in-process project or maybe a um, slideshow video of your company project portfolio. YouTube has also recently released a community feature, which makes it a little bit easier for content creators to engage in conversation and share additional resources with their viewers. So you can engage with the people who create the videos that you're going in and looking at and watching um, that you have found useful um, through that community feature if they've engaged with that. Um, YouTube is also a really easy way to find information on engineering topics, um, maybe opinions about STEM education, uh, changes to the industry. Um, some of the universities also run YouTube pages, so it might be a really easy and fun way to keep up with what's happening at your alma mater, um, particularly in the engineering department. Um, if they're doing uh, a fun project and they video it and you remember doing it, it's a really fun and easy way to stay engaged. I just noticed we got a, um, an email or a, a question, um, what do you consider NSPE's daily conversation email and what social platform does that fall under? I would say that that really falls under, um, an, it's more of an email. Um, a direct email marketing uh, than it is social media. That said, um, NSPE does hold uh, host communities on their website, um, which are areas where you can engage in conversation with other NSPE members. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, a lot of those daily conversation emails reflect back on what's going on in some of those communities. Um, so I would say that it's a combination of uh, email marketing, uh, direct email marketing, and online um, community-based things, which we'll get into a little bit later. Um, I hope that answers your question. Um, all right, so um, moving on. Sorry, lost my place. So the fourth um, most popular uh, platform for social media for engineers is Facebook. Um, this is to be expected, I suppose. Um, it continues to be one of the more popular social networking sites for engineers, and really one of the more popular social networking sites for anyone. Um, it can be a challenge to weed through personal updates to find relevant resources for your career, but by following companies, vendors, and colleagues, you might be surprised to find very rich resources. Um, Facebook, because of this, might be difficult um, for a difficult platform for engineers despite its popularity. Um, finding and searching content is a little bit hard, uh, especially when comparing to things like YouTube and Twitter. Where Facebook really excels is in um, building relationships by liking company pages of your vendors and others you're interested in, like the Illinois Society of Professional Engineers, um, you, and not just liking them, but engaging in conversation with them um, by either liking a post or commenting on it, you're more likely to see more related content on your news feed. Your engagement with the content or your company's publishing of the content for you or your colleagues to engage with 
will help build connections, grow your network, and trick Facebook's analytics into um, helping you see more of the content that you're interested in. So two other, oh, hang on. Um, the percentage of engineers using Facebook, um, unfortunately, the study did not give me that data, um, but I can do a little bit of searching and get back to you um, on that one. Let me just make a note. Um, the two other social platforms that may be of use to engineers are Quora and SlideShare. Um, they both offer resources for engineers, and they both offer engineers the opportunity to be a resource for others. So Quora, in particular, um, is a really great and really interesting way to get your questions answered by knowledgeable professionals. There are a lot of um, engineering-focused boards on Quora, and you can ask a question or you can reply to a question. So not only can you find the information that you're looking for, but if you have information to share or expertise to share, you can do that as well and um, work towards becoming a, an online leader in your field. SlideShare is another way to um, engage on social media or on a type of social media. Uh, it is a way to share your professional presentations with others who are looking for resources on a given topic. So if you go to SlideShare's website, um, you can search for um, slideshows of what a topic that maybe interests you, or if you've just put together a project um, or a slideshow, um, and you've given a presentation and you're willing to share that information with others who might be looking for it, you can upload your information there as well. Um, by participating within one or a few of these social platforms, you really can emerge as a leader in your field. So all this social media mumbo jumbo, um, you might be asking, what's in it for me? So you really get out of social media what you put into it. Um, and you get the most out of social media by maybe following a couple of these things. The first is to find influencers. That is, find people with a little bit of clout in the industry. And chances are you already know who they are. And find them on social media. Follow their posts. Um, ask to connect with them on LinkedIn. Or maybe they have a group page on um, Facebook that you can follow. Get in touch with them through social media and make them a part of your online network. Engage in the conversation that they are, that they are hosting. Um, and then when you post things, they might be more likely to engage with your posts as well. Um, and so that really comes down to be an active participant. Join groups and discussion boards and actively participate, whether that's a group on LinkedIn or maybe um, a community on the NSPE or ISPE website, really actively participate in those things so that you get the most out of them. You can share and retweet posts from others. Um, if you link back to them, if you tag them in your post, um, they'll see that you're sharing their post and again, might be more likely to engage with you as you um, share content or need assistance on something. Um, if you approach your target customers and decision makers, go straight to the top. Connect with these decision makers, these project managers, marketing people. Um, and you can do that and connect with them and really get a lot out of it. Um, the next thing is to use hashtags. Um, hashtags have kind of come ubiquitous within our society and people use them um, as a little bit of a joke. Um, but they are also really useful tools as ways to track trending information in your industry um, and incorporate it. And by incorporating those hashtags into your posts, even if it's simply hashtag engineering, um, you will help your content is a little bit easier to be found. Um, specifically, if you're using a platform like Twitter, um, and I believe LinkedIn and Facebook also have um, 
hashtag capabilities that are the where they started and where they are used the most is really on Twitter. Um, and go offline a little bit too when you're looking at building your social networks. Um, encourage your employees. Chat with your employees, with your colleagues, um, and share your posts with their networks. To share your posts with their networks and vice versa. If one of your colleagues wrote a really great blog post or is working on a, a really interesting project, um, and they can share that information, share their information. Um, provide useful, shareable information on these platforms. While it might be tempting and sometimes interesting to take a photo and share the, our, our really pretty lunch plate, um, what is probably most helpful um, if you're looking to build a network of engineering contacts um, and promote your business or promote your person um, as an expert is to share useful, informative content. So that's great, Courtney, you might say. Um, but taking time out of your day for this can definitely be a challenge. Um, with billable hours, major projects looming ahead, the spring and summer construction season almost upon us, you might say that you're too busy to tweet or otherwise engage in social media. Um, maybe your boss doesn't want you using social media where, while you're at your desk, or your posting time is really limited to the evenings or during your lunch break, and you've got other things to do during those times, and you don't want to spend all day, every day worrying about that. There are ways to engage in social media and work smarter instead of harder. That is to say, schedule it out. Hootsuite is probably my favorite um, tool for this. Um, it's one of a few different social media sharing platforms, um, and it lets you schedule out your posts across platforms. Um, and there are others, um, like TweetDeck is one, um, but Hootsuite is really easy to use. You can sign up using your Twitter or your Facebook page, so you don't even have to worry about remembering another password. And so think about it. Did you read a great article on Tuesday? Plan, you plan to um, attend uh, an event on Thursday, and then next Monday you're going to announce a new project that you're working on. If you create a free Hootsuite account, take a couple of minutes to set it up and link your account. Um, you can schedule out all three tweets Facebook posts or LinkedIn updates or any combination thereof all at once. And you can then go in as you have time to reply to people or look at what other people are posting um, and interact with people that way. Um, so it's really a one-stop shop to promote and review your social activity. Um, it really is a tool that's primarily used as companies or by companies, and so if you're thinking about how to use social media for um, your firm, I can't recommend something like this enough. Um, this helps you plan out for the week, okay, this and this and this are all going to go out this week, and I don't want them to be all posted back to back. I can schedule them out over the course of a couple days, and then say you get into Wednesday of the week and you need to cancel Friday's post, you can do that. Um, but that said, this can also be used by individuals looking who, to ramp up their online presence. Um, to really get the most out of social media, you have to be engaged on social media. Whether you're promoting your own industry knowledge, work as an independent contractor, or your multi-location engineering firm. It doesn't matter. It's applicable across the board. So <clears throat> you're on social media and you're reading articles, and you're interacting with your peers, and everything's going great. But whether it's just you or your business, the real next step is to determine who your audience is. So if you're primarily interested in building social media presence for your company, one of your first steps to, is to determine the scope of your current audience and how you might want to expand it. Much like advertisers select target markets for their products, you want to know what, the, what audience is viewing your content. Um, the advertising 
I see while watching a Cubs game on ESPN are way different than those that I see while I'm watching Grey's Anatomy. Um, your online content is the same. A group of marketers looked at the best way to reach out from business to business clients and business to consumer clients. This is primarily applicable to those who might be within a leadership position within an engineering firm and are looking to promote their business to other businesses or to individual clients or individual consumers. Um, it's in line with some of the things we just looked at a few minutes ago. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube are among platforms used most by engineers and by businesses and consumers. Really, this means that there is an audience for content you may create on your own and con content you've decided to share from an outside or company source. And knowing where to post it is key. If marketing your business, online advertising, if you're marketing your business, online advertising is also something to consider. Approximately $72.9 billion were spent on digital advertising in 2016. And it probably comes as absolutely no surprise to anyone that Facebook is one of the biggest players in digital advertising. This kind of indicates that social media advertising is at the front and center of um, digital, the digital ad world. In fact, Facebook kind of blows all other digital properties out of the water when it comes to its display ad spending, capturing 35.4% of total display advertising spent in the U.S which is $11.93 billion. Second place Google, by comparison, only took in $4.79 billion. And that's just display ads. Facebook's total social ads revenue was more than $6.8 billion in Q3 of 2016 alone. But the other social networks are nothing to sneeze at, with Twitter bringing in $545 million in social media advertising revenue in the same period. Snapchat will sell about $367 million in social ads in 2016, um, and they launched their ad platform only a year ago. Social total ad spending in 2016 was expected to reach $32.97 billion, um, according to this report from October. And it's estimated that by 2018, um, Facebook alone will top that number more than $32 billion in advertising just to Facebook by 2018. That's to say that there are a lot of advertising or advertisements on Facebook, and chances are you've seen them and interacted with them. And what's really interesting about Facebook's advertising um, is that you can drill down to who your ad will be seen by. If you only want it to be seen by people within a certain zip code or um, people who have identified as male between the ages of 35 and 42, um, you can drill down to that specific information um, when you're posting a Facebook ad um, and, and really target who you're um, promoting either your, your post or an actual advertisement to. So stepping back for a second, we've looked at the major social networks, um, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, um, and how you can promote your company or yourself through them, whether it's by individual posts or by advertising. But it's important to know that there are other platforms out there there are engineering-specific platforms. Um, a number of sites for engineers, computer scientists, and scientific researchers that are geared toward more specialized, nuanced networking exist. Some of these sites um, cover overall engineering, like CR4, um, while some target specific fields. LNET 14, for example, caters to design engineers. Um, quite a few are devoted to research, Mendeley is a research, research reference manager and an academic social network. MyNet Research um, is a networking site for global research. 
Research Crossroads as a project showcase for funding and collaborators. And ResearchGate is a social networking site for scientists and engineers to discover and share research. And Vivo connects researchers between participating universities and institutions. And many of these sites go beyond a Facebook for engineers approach. Um, LabRoots uh, is a networking and collaboration site for scientists, engineers, and technical professionals. And they spent $500,000 on developing proprietary data mining software so that they could create targeted science search engines to collect people involved in similar work and interests, as well as the relevant job boards, virtual conferences, videos, live feeds, news, um, live news feeds, blogs, research paper reviews, and other activity within the network. Um, their CEO, Greg Krushank, um, said that, quote, We've tried to make it one-stop shopping within specific science portals, so you never have to leave the site. So that's, that's very, very specific, um, specific to the, specific to your industry, specific to the type of research you may be doing if you, if you do research. Um, but if you're looking for sources of information for engineers, that are perhaps a bit less technical, but with quality content on a variety of topics applicable to your industry. Um, there are a couple that I've identified here. Um, and you may already use these, which is fantastic. Um, design News is one. Um, they own one of the largest trusted communities of design engineers. Um, their website has current news, blog posts, and videos, um, and might be a source of um, information that you would want to share across your social platform. The Engineering Exchange is a social network that connects over 11,000 engineers around the world. Um, you can use the exchange to view and share videos or blog posts and participate in forum discussion, discussions about topics that matter to you. And it's an interesting way to connect with engineers who maybe face problems different than the ones that we have in Illinois. Um, and so you can talk to someone on the other side of the world and they can talk to you and you can still find common ground within the industry. Um, the exchange also lets you connect with engineers in similar positions, locations, or industries and browse a resource section full of 3D CAD models and leader, uh, content leaderboards. Um, Engineering.com has a variety of free tools, an engineering library, um, and subject-based directories. Um, that are geared towards engineers of all disciplines. And then there's IllinoisEngineer.com, which is ISP's website, and it's the best place to find information that are, is specific to the society, but it's also a great way to network with your fellow members. Um, ISPE hosts a variety of communities for ISPE members, and this goes into um, the question about the National Society and what they have available as well. Um, these are really targeted groups where people can share resources, engage in conversation, and keep up to date on the latest information. If there's a community that you think we should have, you should let us know, and we can create one if, if it feeds the needs of, of the membership. Um, one community that we are working to grow um, is our government affairs community. And this is a members-only area, um, and it's a place to share updates from the State House as they come, um, it's a repository for back episodes of State House Rock, um, and it's a place for engineers to engage in conversations about topics related to government affairs. Um, it was particularly helpful during the last legislative session, and hopefully will continue going forward. One of the big benefits of our communities is that if you go in and you join them and you follow them, you'll get an email digest when somebody makes an update so that you can stay as informed as uh, you want or need to be. And so with all these different places to find information, who should you trust? Looking back to the survey done by engineering.com that we talked about uh, at the beginning of the presentation, nearly all engineers indicated that online resources are a valuable source of information on the latest technologies, trends, and products. Print sources and technical conferences were both rated as moderately or very valuable. 
and the lesser percentage found trade shows to be valuable. However, this might be due to trade shows often being incorporated within conferences within the industry. I thought that that was uh, an interesting point because the, the ISPE convention, for example, um, has vendors um, available to speak with, though um, we also have the educational content as well. So curious to think how respondents to the survey may have been, um, may have taken that question and interpreted it. Looking at trusted resources, um, the survey, cross-tabulation on the survey revealed how particular industries value content sources. Um, looking at the engineering, um, engineers on average find online resources most valuable, followed by technical conferences and print publications. But engineering design services industry is unique in preferring trade shows most then technical conferences, then online resources and print publications least. So looking across the wider scope of the industry, um, it's interesting to see how different pockets um, view different resources or the same resources. As I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, um, engineers have the highest level of trust for an engineering expert at a vendor company followed by industry analysts. I am really interested to know, when looking at this data, um, if it can be applied to the ISP membership, um, or to those of you on the call. Um, if you have specific examples of, of sources that you trust, um, let me know, and I'd be happy to share those with the group. So, <clears throat> how do you find content online? A social post has to start somewhere. Outside of original content, how do engineers find content online? Um, we've talked about what platforms are out there and what engineering specific resources exist. Um, but how do people find it in the beginning? Engineers most often do a keyword search in Google, about 79%, to find work-related content. Email subscriptions and searching vendor-specific sites you are familiar with are the most common ways. Um, social media falls very close to the bottom of the pack, which is interesting. Um, so the question remains, do you want to change that? This timeline shows the percentage of the U.S. population with a social network profile from 2008 to 2016. In 2016, 78% of Americans had a, a social network profile, representing a 5% growth compared to the previous year. According to estimates, the worldwide social media users, the number of worldwide social media users reached 1.96 billion and is expected to grow to some 2.5 billion by 2018. On a global level, the market leader is the American social network, Facebook. Um, in fact, the first social media platform to surpass 1 billion registered accounts on both its desktop and mobile versions was Facebook. As of January of last year, Facebook had some 1.5 billion accounts, um, which is just um, the vastness is huge. Um, the region with the highest penetration of social media use is North America with 59%, followed by South America and West Europe. In the United States, an estimated 185 million people who used social media in 2016, um, that number is forecast to exceed 200 million by 2020. Uh, Facebook also leads the U.S. market, accounting for about 44% of all social media vis site visits in the country. So industry-wide, or it's not even, it's not specific to engineering, just across the board, um, people are using social media. Although knowing how many people use social media is a powerful indicator of the influence that websites and apps have on our life, who exactly and how people use them are telling. A Pew Research Center report on social media usage that was released in 2015 
shows that among Americans, age is indirectly proportionate with the degree of penetration. So this means that about 90% of those 18 to 29 year olds um, in the country tended to have at least one social media account, while the probability decreased the more respondents have advanced in age, which goes back to the data from the engineering specific survey and kind of um, really reflects that. Um, the probability decreased um, as people advance in age. And the study showed that social media usage is highest in suburban America and among those earning over 75,000 US dollars a year and those with the highest degree of education. That to me was surprising, but I guess not out of the realm of possibility, um, particularly because Facebook was started um, as a social networking site for college students. Um, and as the college students that were the early adopters of Facebook started to age out of college, um, it opened up across the board. On a global level, user engagement continues to grow. Um, users in the Philippines are spending the most time on social media, about 3.7 hours a day. Um, in the United States, 29% of um, of us claim to log into our social accounts several times every day. So going forward, social media, if it continues on this trend, it isn't going away anytime soon. Uh, as younger engineers enter the workforce, social media usage within companies and engineering firms will continue to rise. It could continue to become a growing source of information to help you in your career as well as another way to network with and engage with your fellow engineers. So that said, um, if anyone has any additional questions, I'd be happy to field those. Um, you also all have my email. Um, so I will go ahead and um, take the time to thank you all for your attentiveness. Um, if there are any questions about Facebook, um, feel free to call or email me here at headquarters. And um, thank you guys. Um, thank you all very much. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Um, and don't forget your chapter math counts competitions um, begin tomorrow and go through the month, um, culminating in our state competition on March 4th. So keep all of those math leads in your thoughts, and um, we'll go from there. And I'll talk to you all next month. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great day.